Tibet, or the Land of Snows, is a vast country perched high in the Himalaya mountain range of Central Asia. For over 3,000 years, Tibetans have lived simply and in harmony with the natural world. The ideas and customs which comprise Tibetan Buddhist traditional culture find expression in daily life, in politics, economics, art, and family activities. For the people of Tibet, religion and all other spheres of culture are very closely interrelated. Their peaceful society was geographically insulated from the developing world until the 1950s, when Chinese communists violently invaded Tibet and occupied this Buddhist nation. During the period known as the Cultural Revolution, between 1950 and 1980, over one million Tibetans perished. And then from here, and we still, uh, uh, Mount Kailash, it's just unbearable. You know, like Tibetans. You see that, well, that was in 1987, 86, 78, when I was there. When you travel all these men, there are kind of beggars on the way. Tibetan beggars, they beg. If they any leftover, can just left over and can eat a tin can or anything. Even the, the, the morsel, what we ate, they want, you know, they just beg for it. The emphasis of the Cultural Revolution was on revolutionizing society. This program was instituted by Mao Zedong as a means to shorten the time needed for full communization. He believed that by destroying all symbols of the old culture, for example monasteries, temples, religious leaders, books, a cultural norm or standard would be created, a new order. Mao's great revolution was to be carried out by a group of young motivators called the Red Guard. In 1966, the Red Guard poured into Tibet to eradicate the Tibetan ideology, culture, habits, and customs. The mood of this time period was anti-intellectual, anti-bureaucratic, and anti-religion. We walked maybe for last two months or something like that to get to the border, you know. When we got that border, the Nepalese people wouldn't let us get into India. We, got, we started our journey in winter with the, with the hope that we'll be in India by the time, you know, summer breaks. But somehow we got to the Ramsar only in June. So we got stuck on the border. It was very hard and it was very much unsuitable and we had a lot of problems and many Tibetans died and I even lost my two brothers there, you know. My mother was completely sick, you know. It left hundreds of thousands of Tibetans struggling merely to stay alive. I miss my, great, uh, my grandparents because I grew up, I grew up with them. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a very, very hard thing for me because, you know, I, I didn't know the value of my parents when I started study because I grew up with my grandparents and I had to come uh, with my parents. They, I wanted to stay behind and when I last saw my grandmother, you know, she knew that I was coy and I actually promised her that I would come back and fetch her to India. But every day when we made our journey, every night when I sleep, you know, I used to try to recall all the ways that we came. I thought I was going to go, I have to go through the same way to fetch her. Right. I really thought I was going to fetch her, but I, I didn't manage that. Yeah.
The tragedy of Tibet, which was formerly an independent country, is the direct result of China's four-decade occupation. In addition to the tremendous loss of life, over 6,000 Buddhist monasteries were destroyed. More than 100,000 Tibetans, including His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama, the political and spiritual leader of the Tibetan people, presently live in exile in neighboring countries such as India, Nepal, and Bhutan. In short, the Chinese Communist Party nearly succeeded in destroying Tibet's culture, including its religious practices. Today, after 50 years of brutal and inhumane treatment, the Tibetan people continue to search for a peaceful response to the war of cultural genocide which has been waged against them. How can, how can Americans help the Tibetans while they're in America? Uh, uh, like uh, the Tibetan people who are suffering in Tibet. So if they understand how they serve in Tibet, so they can uh, help the Tibetans. His Holiness the Dalai Lama has summed up the essence of Buddhism, particularly as it speaks to the Tibetan situation. He says, help others if you can. If you can't do that, at least don't harm others. This film is dedicated to the people of Tibet for their nonviolent struggle for independence and their invaluable efforts to preserve this ancient culture. Even someone whose life is rooted in knowledge acts according to his own nature, because everyone behaves according to his own character. What then could man achieve by oppression? <laughs> <laughs>